you probably saw out there on Friday and Saturday and now today on Sunday a few of the video clips of John McCain being confronted at town hall meetings across the state of Arizona that the member of the Keating uh, Six no one is able to ever get rid of. The anti-gun, world government promoting, open border promoting, banker bailout promoting, piece of absolute traitorous garbage. The uh, Chucky Schumer uh, dressed up as a Republican. But we posted some videos up on Infowars.com of what really went on at those things. Shot from behind the podium where you see everyone screaming at McCain, everyone hating him and saying he should be arrested for treason and running Al Qaeda. And this is happening all over the country. People are waking up to what's happening. And this is really a manifestation of the accelerated understanding people are having about the level of tyranny that we're under and are about to be under because things are, are rapidly uh, degrading right now, obviously. And you've got those groups of people that are waking up very, very fast versus people that are actually getting more into their nihilistic uh, denial and their criticism of those of us that are trying to reverse the degenerative tide that we've been swept under by. But the, the, the cattle, the willingly ignorant, willingly duped, uh, arrested development population out there, they don't count. They're just prey that the globalists have always been feeding on. And the globalists want to make us all like that. But it doesn't matter if 5% of us are awake and don't go along, the, the New World Order can't get away with this. And we're talking maybe 30, 40% of the country that is really waking up fully right now. I'd say 10% is hardcore awake, 30, 40% somewhat awake. And once you reach that tipping point, if they just wake up one more person, it's bye-bye New World Order. We can all then basically just passively bring this thing down and no amount of false flags, no amount of staging new wars, no amount of anything is ever going to put it back together again. Because here's the big issue, the good news. The term false flag, self-inflicted wound, inside job, frame job, set up, key bono, who benefits in Latin. That is now popular nomenclature across the world. And we have now seen everyone from Rush Limbaugh to Ted Cruz to Ron Paul to Rand Paul to Pat Buchanan and so many others now saying it's an inside job. The Russians saying it's an inside job. Pundits on Fox News having debates about inside job. The Russian report that the latest chemical attacks an inside job. If you take the power of the false flag, the Hegelian dialectic of problem, reaction, solution, away from the technocrats, it's pretty much game over. Because sometimes they don't even stage stuff. It happens, but they use that to take our liberties. Like there's a mass shooting, then they want to take all everybody's guns when guns on average make us safer. The collective guilt is gone. The collective fear is gone. People now understand. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. Okay, uh, obviously there's big military developments in and around Syria with more Russian and Chinese Battleships, uh, missile cruisers, uh, helicopter carriers, and troop carriers arriving. B-1 bombers and B-2 bombers have been deployed to Diego Garcia to launch nuclear strikes in the Middle East and into Russia. 
Chinese uh, fighter wings are being moved to uh, their western border as well with Pakistan and India. The world is lining up for war. Now, I don't think we're going to have World War III, and I hope we don't, obviously. But many analysts, uh, you've heard them and seen them on the news, are saying that an attack on Syria will probably lead to a larger regional war and that there is a chance, in fact, a good chance, a good chance that that could lead to a war between what's left of the United States, where captured by mega banks, UN uh, institutions that are above the law and, and pay no taxes, who use us uh, as, their, as their juggernaut worldwide, uh, there is a very good chance that the occupied United States and NATO in Europe will be thrown into a larger war with the Ruskies. Uh, back on 888 in 2008, the day the Olympics began, uh, Georgian forces backed by NATO uh, mercenaries slammed into South Ossetia and Abkhazia, uh, mass murdering uh, Russian peacekeeping troops uh, in their beds. Uh, destroying their uh, quarters, uh, firing missiles into them, sending in special forces. And then when the Russians tried to organize for a counterattack, uh, they were overrun and slaughtered uh, by uh, armored divisions uh, of NATO with Georgia. And of course, the mass hoax was launched that day. I got up and heard, did you hear? My wife was shaking me awake at about 6.30 in the morning. Did you hear Russia attack Georgia? And I went, excuse me? Russia attack. So I walked in, turned on CNN. They announced Russia has attacked Georgia. Russian tanks are pouring in uh, and, and, and attacking the poor president who was on TV, literally biting on his tie, begging for NATO help. And NATO began to send in C-130s loaded with more commandos. And I got to the office at about 9 a.m., read all the news. Uh, went on air and said, well, CNN's announcing Russia attacked. Now, by the end of the show, it was in the European, German, Dutch, French, and, and British news that actually, actually Russia attacked after they were overrun and they were attacked. So they play a lawyer game. They said, well, Russia attacked, and then the bottom of the article after they were attacked. And they rolled in medium-range, mobile, you know, the big trucks with the, with the missiles on the back of the nukes, and I, I was blown away. I mean, that was, that was six years ago or five and a half years ago. And I couldn't believe then that they would announce on Fox, CNN, MSNBC, CNBC, NPR, every station in the country. Go back and look it up. It's now admitted that the attack was launched on Russia. And so I went on air and said, I was duped. I can't believe they'd lie that bad. I mean, even I couldn't believe lies of that magnitude. And then I was called in the national news a traitor, maybe a Ruski agent, folks. Because I was saying, well, wait, the foreign press admits that, that the Georgian forces, backed by NATO, tried to start a war with Russia. And then backed off when Russia, the, their chairman of their joint chiefs, went on TV, and I played this on the radio. You can look it up from the time and said, we're going to now start launching nuclear weapons uh, if the uh, troop carrying aircraft landing in the capital of Georgia to not turn around and take off. You're given a one hour and we are going to start nuclear war. You're given one hour and we're going to launch nuclear missiles on Europe. You attacked us, international law, you have one hour to pull out, we're going to nuke you. And Dick Cheney and George Bush and NATO and Sarkozy at the time and 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 the rest of them backed off. But that's when I really started to get, wow, these people really are crazy. They really are crazy. And the Russians are crazy too, but they're not the ones starting it. They came in and crushed it. Now, the good news is if you fast forward five years later to 2013, Pat Buchanan, Ron Paul, Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, Rush Limbaugh, Glenn Beck, Alex Jones, articles on Drudge Report, Matt Drudge. I want to speak for Drudge himself, but the articles on the side have carried it. But, but all those others have openly come out and said, we believe this is probably a frame-up, inside job, false flag, to be blamed on 
Assad, who would logically not use chemicals if he's going to get invaded, and he's winning the war. And the intelligence they have is his secretary of defense screaming at their troops, their generals saying, you better not launch this. And the Russians just released a 100-page dossier. It was actually out in March that the al-Qaeda rebels got caught nerve gassing before. They didn't get caught. They upload videos of it bragging. They did it again three weeks ago. See, that's what's so frustrating is the West did launch an attack on Russia. That's now admitted. Just the public can't find Georgia on a map. It ain't the place north of Florida with peaches, folks. I'm talking about new listeners. I'm not being mean here. But, I mean, you know, it's admitted that the West tried to start some weird war to see if Russia would back off five years ago. It's admitted the rebels. We found a video on an official Al-Qaeda website that's been up for years on their channel where they uploaded the jihadis saying, of course, we launched the nerve gas attack. Osama bin Laden told us to kill women and children. That, to their credit, got picked up by Fox News. So the good news here is I was on Geraldo Rivera's radio show and then Saturday on his TV show. I had wrongfully posted a short video saying, well, it looks like they edited me down. Actually, I'm told I was on the full six minutes, just the only clip on YouTube's a minute and a half long. We're trying to find the longer one. But they let me come on and lay out the Russian report and lay out that all these prominent people said it looks like an inside job and that and that over 60 percent of the rebels are Al-Qaeda, the CFR admits. And uh, this is a horrible plan to destabilize Syria and break it in multiple parts and that Obama for two and a half years in Jordan has been arming these rebels and injecting them and that, and that it's, it's, it's not a civil war, it's foreign mercenaries coming in. And so the good news is I listen and monitor talk radio and I heard talk radio, some of them a week ago, uh, regional and local hosts trying to push the war. None of them are doing that now because every caller, every caller, every caller I've heard has called in and said it's an abomination. Our government's behind Al-Qaeda. They're using Al-Qaeda to take our liberties. Our government created Al-Qaeda, uh, you know, back in the 70s. People now get it. They understand the term false flag that no one knew 10, 15 years ago. Uh, they're now talking about setups and proxy wars. And, and it's really the public driving this to where Anderson Cooper was pushing war a week ago. He's saying it's a bad idea now as of Friday. Uh... MSNBC was pushing the war a week ago. They're not pushing it now. Fox News isn't pushing it now. Uh, this talk of it's well known, Assad did it. People are engaged in the novel idea of saying, show us the proof. So uh, Putin came out and laughed at Kerry and said, what a liar. Everyone knows most of the forces there are Al-Qaeda. You know, Kerry said there's no Al-Qaeda. I mean, that's a bald-faced lie. And so they're still doing their old lies, but now they're doing it with people awake, and that's how history works. It's like a light switch. It's a tipping point, and I'm telling you, folks, we've crossed it. So the big question is, what are they going to pull to divert us from this massive awakening on the NSA, on Obamacare, on Benghazi? As we saw in Katrina, and as we are watching now in New York and New Jersey, the federal government can't and won't help you in a crisis. FEMA ran out of water and MREs in days. Electricity is still off to over one million people. The Red Cross, who is quick to beg for money, is now slow to react. Don't put it off any longer. Get prepared today. While you're on InfoWarsShop.com, check out these other great preparedness items. The Aquapod Kit lets you store up to 65 gallons of water in your bathtub. Pocket Socket provides you with manual electricity for small electronics like your cell phone. The Life Straw is great for your bug out bag. And check out our complete line of inner food products for great tasting and nutritionally dense foods that have a great shelf life. If you are looking to secure your home in a crisis, you can order Strategic Relocations the film, a great companion to the book Strategic Relocations 3rd Edition, and The Secure Home by Joel Skousen. When the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has already passed. Get prepared now, so if a crisis strikes your home, you and your family will be secure. Go to InfoWarsShop.com. Well, for the tyrants that run the New World Order, 
the sands of time for them are certainly running very, very low. And uh, I've got a New York Times headline here that says Israel backs limited strike against Assad. And then goes on to say, even though um, most of the American people are against it, the Congress is against it, that the Israeli government uh, is for it. Well, I would say so. Uh, the French government's for it as well. All of these different powers that want to slice up pieces of Syria, like the old colonials did, want a piece of it. And it's extremely immoral for Israel to side with Al-Qaeda, one of their main enemies, just because they're busy killing Syrians and going after Assad, who morally is a much better guy than Al-Qaeda. And I think that's finally what has woken up the American people. But Obama says now that, well, it doesn't matter if the House may not vote, because it looks like he's going to lose by more than 100 votes. That's how unpopular this war is. Just a week ago, it looked like he had the votes in the House. Now, it looks like there's more than 100 votes. He would lose by more than 100 votes. So, so, so the House is saying, Boehner's saying, the Speaker of the House is saying, we won't even have a vote then, because this might embarrass you. Because after all, why do you need a vote if he doesn't need to do it anyways? I saw CNN during the break, because I have it on in the uh, coffee room next door to the studio. Saying, with some guest, a congressman was on going, well, listen, he needs to lead. He's the executive. That's who launches war. This is word for word. That's who handles international affairs, not Congress. Folks, Congress controls the power of the purse, war, all of it. Why not just have a dictator or the president handles it? I mean, that's our Constitution. That's, it's unbelievable. Under the War Powers Act, if ICBMs have been launched, the Congress has already given the president the power with the nuclear football to respond. But he's already been given that duty and been voted that power by the Congress. The argument of, well, he can just strike anybody he wants without Congress to say so or without anybody else to say so, because he's the commander in chief. He's only the commander in chief when war has been declared and authorized. And then the mission, the war bill is passed and handed to the president to execute. That's how that works, ladies and gentlemen, not the other way around. Or why not just have a Napoleon Bonaparte or a Hitler for that matter? You know, Hitler was elected. But he used war and crises as a way to erode the basic checks and balances. So here's the big issue. We've got 91% in a Reuters poll. Uh, the most pro-war polls I see are 15% for it. Uh, World Net Daily did articles. Infowars.com did articles. Off uh, well, the Weekly Standard did articles off of congressmen and women who put out press releases in the last week saying the calls they were getting. 500 and... 40-something to 2, 520-something to 4, 102 to 1, 99 to 1. It's over 99 to 1 phone calls, Republican and Democrat. You've got all these Republicans saying, well, I've never seen such an overwhelming response. I've never seen such a absolute no message from the American people. And so they're backing off. But now the new spin is, well, you know what? We didn't need the Congress anyways. Yeah, there it is. Calls to Congress, 499 to 1 against Syrian war, World Net Daily. And then if you pull up our article, we just said 99 to 1 just to be, you know, people accuse me of exaggerating. And sometimes I do by accident. I got to be honest. I tend to actually not tell you how bad things are just because it sounds too crazy. Or when things are really good, I, I just... I just went with one congressperson's 99 to 1 and had that headline up, but showed the 500 to 1 type stuff uh, under it. We can pull up the World Net Daily uh, article, but also pull up the Infowars.com. Type in 99, 99 to 1 against the war. 99% of Americans against the war. Infowars.com, you can pull it up. And, and the reason our article is important is you can then link directly through to all the actual tweets and press releases and websites by the bipartisan Republicans and Democrats saying they've never, never 
never seen this much opposition. So the term false flag is now mainstream. The term stage terror is now mainstream. The term Hegelian dialectic is now mainstream. The term problem, reaction, solution is now being used on C-SPAN, Fox News, and CNN. The Russian report is out that, by the way, I don't just believe the Russians. The Turks that have one of the biggest armies in Europe, probably the third largest, well, maybe the largest for actual troops. They want war. They've been shelling Syria off and on for two and a half years. They want to take a big part of Syria. Okay? They used to run Syria under the Ottoman Empire. The corrupt Turkish government last year and this year caught al-Qaeda jihadis trying to cross the border into Syria with nerve gas. Okay? The, uh, the rebels have uploaded video after video after video with them loading it, singing songs to Osama bin Laden. You can go to Infowars.com, pull them up. But now it's even BBC, AP, Reuters, Fox News, you name it. It is real jihadis, the same ones taking over Christian villages, blowing everything up, chopping Christian priests' heads off, shooting nuns in the back. I mean, there's new videos every day we put on Infowars.com. And the good news is they're finally getting picked up by the news. This is who Obama calls his, re his rebels, who they did call protesters and demonstrators before. So it is incredibly evil. And I want to open the phones up and get your take on this. Is this co the collapse in confidence in the establishment? And what will they do, do you think, to get the public back in line to go along with what the globalists are pushing? The toll-free number to join us is 877-789-2539. The weekday number doesn't work. We run everything out of my studio on Sunday, so this is directly into our studio. 877-789-ALEX. 877-789-2539. We're opening the phone system right now. Uh, so give it a minute because we haven't turned it on yet. It's computerized. Now, that said, we have an update up on PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com. Dias Air Force Base in West Texas. Tuesday, I got a call from, let's just say, a high-level source at the base saying, Alex, we're not supposed to have nukes here since the 80s, the 1986 START Treaty. They pull them out of mothballs, load them on trucks, don't sign paperwork, just like the thing that happened in Minot, North Dakota in, in 2007 that was a national scandal, and they're being shipped to, to South Carolina. We called the base and recorded it Mon uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and, and when they answer the phone, they go, what, do you want to know about the weapons transfer? But they won't confirm or deny it, which, which again, just adds more credence to our source. So that's pretty creepy. We'll talk about that, too. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <clears throat> My judge, what is the secret of the universe? <laughs> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> You know, folks, I've told listeners many, many times that we have Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, CNBC, C-SPAN on throughout the building, just in hallways. We've got televisions hooked up to different channels so we can monitor things, just standard newsroom hookup. So during the break, I go back to a glass of water, and I'm watching CNN with, with retired military officers on saying, you're not allowed to protest when you're active duty in the military, and the people that are criticizing Obama and the Syria strike, they could be arrested. And we were actually able to then back it up on the DVR. We have it recorded. If I have time later, I'll play a clip of it. But the point here is, over a week and a half ago, before Obama even gave his speech and announced the strike, but when they had Kerry pushing it, we saw on Twitter and Facebook all these military people, because a lot of them were InfoWars listeners. They were sending us the photos directly to our email and saying, hey, look at my photo. Uh, you know, I'm going public here. Please don't say my name. Because some of them have Facebooks that, you know, they use a, a gnome de plume or a pen name on. Some of them have gone public. We've had some of them on the show, active duty. And they're now on TV saying, you better watch it or we'll arrest you. Folks, did the German military in 1944 have a right to try to resist Hitler? Of course they did. If the president was hypothetically 
beating children's brains out with baseball bats on the White House lawn, would it be illegal? Well, Nixon said it wouldn't be illegal. When the president does something, it's not illegal. Of course, the courts, common law, constitution say that's not true. The president can be arrested for misdemeanors like anybody else. Well, these are high crimes, ladies and gentlemen, high crimes and misdemeanors. You can be impeached. And then after you've been found guilty by the House and the Senate, they can have your butt clapped in irons. Any of these JAG courts could go after the globalist. But the number one thing that needs to happen, and Congressman Walter Jones is coming on this week, has introduced the legislation, is to begin impeachment proceedings on Obama. Because if, if, if they don't have the votes in the House, so they say, well, we're not going to vote now. Obama, you're allowed to attack. No, he's not. No, he's not. You're only allowed to attack if somebody's got missiles fueling and is going to fire them. Then the Congress has already given the president the authorization. That's why they said Saddam was going to attack England. Remember in 45 minutes, if they didn't pass the war resolution? And then, of course, they passed it and he didn't attack in 45 minutes. The, the difference here is that now people are seeing through this. So there's a constitutional crisis and day by day the awakening builds as they try to say, you're a terrorist if you criticize the government. It's unconstitutional to criticize the government. It's illegal. The founding fathers are bad. Obama truth squads will come after you if you talk bad about the dear leader. Uh, we'll arrest members of the military if they criticize this war. Uh, you keep your mouth shut. You shut your mouth. I know so many people in media, so many people uh, in music, in, in film, who were all told, you don't criticize government. You don't criticize Obama or you're going to lose your job or lose your contract. These aren't liberals. These are authoritarians. I mean, Tom Selleck, just because he was a Republican, couldn't get work anymore as soon as he went public for the Second Amendment. Same thing for Charlton Heston, who had work lined up around the block. As soon as he went public for the Second Amendment, boom, no more work. This is the reign of terror they've been involved in, and people are standing up and they're saying no. And so the system can't shut everybody down now. It is not just the right of military personnel, active duty, non-commissioned, and commissioned, to criticize an executive and to criticize their commanders when they're doing things that are patently unconstitutional and patently illegal. It is not their right. It is their absolute duty. I've read the Uniform Code. I've read the military codes. And they're all based on the Bill of Rights, Constitution, Declaration of Independence, Magna Carta, Common Law, folks. If someone gives you an order to commit a crime, you become just as guilty as who gave the order when you follow it. That's why the mafia, soldiers get in trouble for doing a murder and the boss gets in trouble for ordering the murder. The Nuremberg precept is that just following orders does not make you not guilty. In fact, it makes you just as guilty. And then you have the Fuhrer precept that came in 1933, saying the Fuhrer is above the law. And so our government is bringing in the Fuhrer precept, the leader precept, the king precept, the right of kings, the sovereign, where under NDAA, Obama can just say, take them away to the dungeon. And then all of his designates can spy on you without warrants or secretly arrest you or shoot you in the back for no reason or kill you during an interrogation and nobody gets in trouble because we're getting deep down the tunnel. And our military knows the government grows the drugs and ships them in. Our military knows that the big contractors run the sex trade. Our military knows our government runs and has been training Al-Qaeda for at least two and a half years in Jordan and in Libya and is trying to turn the Egyptian government over to Al-Qaeda while they blow up dozens of churches every week. And our media calls them protesters. Our military knows about Benghazi. You've got uh, the uh, head State Department official, Mr. Hicks, going public. We've got that clip coming up. Gregory Hicks saying he's been threatened and told to shut up. <gasps> really? Who would have thought he'd been threatened? The other whistleblowers have disappeared and we're told they're in the witness protection program and maybe never seen again. What, like Jimmy Hoffa? They're probably dead, ladies and gentlemen. Notice you've heard, oh, a bunch of the people involved in Benghazi, you'll never, they've had their names changed, uh-huh.
<laughs> you know, oh, I bet they had their names changed. Hicks has been smart enough to stay public. I'll guarantee you some of them have been chopped up, folks, and fed to the fishes. Because they all know, you think you're going to just know what happened in Benghazi and not be killed? The problem is, is that uh, multiple situation rooms on aircraft carriers and at NATO and at CENTCOM in Florida were all watching live predator feeds of the seven-hour killing of the ambassador and others and watched al-Qaeda haul all the missiles and weapons out of the three warehouses. I've talked to the military. It's all been seen. It's all known. The whole military knows. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. The government runs al-Qaeda. Of course they run al-Qaeda. And they run al-Qaeda, and they're going to turn Syria over to al-Qaeda. And, of course, they ordered the rebels to launch a chemical attack. Obama says, my red line is, you launch a chemical attack, I'm going to bombard and invade. Then they bombard them with Turkish weapons. The Israelis have been bombing them, cruise missiles. Syria is holding on, being attacked by Turkey, Jordan, Israel, Al-Qaeda troops out of Iraq, U.S. NATO special forces. I mean, they are just, just blowing up every church, massacring everyone. Just, just absolutely 20. And the military is sitting there giving intel and giving drone intelligence to Al-Qaeda. And the truth is the military is freaking out right now because they're, they're, all, they're following orders, folks. They're in there serving Al-Qaeda, who's the main force, the main force. And it is melting things down. The globalists are still in the pole position to win the race, but they've they, they've got their RPMs as high as they'll go, and the engine is rattling, about to explode, and they got 10 more laps to go, folks. Their engine, to use a NASCAR analogy, is going to blow up. The question is, what's going to happen when the engine blows on this? They'll probably stage a big, new, giant false flag. Or blow something up and, you know, say Assad did it and, it and it'll be so horrible they'll use that as an excuse to clamp down. Because here's what I, I realized this morning. We're going to come back and play some key clips and have a guest coming on. I realized they know everybody's awake. They just have to have the confidence game of saying, we never said there was a red line. Or, of course we need boots on the ground. We never said there wouldn't be boots on the ground. They're lying day by day now and they don't even care. They're just going to go ahead with all this. It doesn't matter if they're getting 500 plus calls to one in Congress. It doesn't matter if everybody's against it, left, right, and center. This is part of the plan, and they may even want to start World War III as the false flag to totally take over. Got to break a few eggs to make a world government omelet. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the most important time of our lives. We have loaded phone lines from folks calling in from all over the United States and worldwide. Your calls are coming up. John B. Wells, syndicated talk show host and uh, internationally known voiceover talent as well for a lot of big movies and TV shows out there. A very uh, informative, uh, intelligent political brain will be riding shotgun with us uh, in the entire next hour. And he'll join us at the last few minutes of this hour to give us his take uh, on what's happening and to give us a breakdown of what he wants to cover uh, coming up interspersed with your phone calls. But I noticed, uh, I was on Google News and I saw one of the big liberal websites, I'm not going to give it a plug, attacking me and saying I'm crazy, saying that the rebels clearly launched the chemical attack to blame Assad when you've got major governments saying that and they call me a tinfoil hat wearer. That doesn't work anymore. You people sit up there and you defend tyranny, and then there's all these comments by Democrats saying horrible things about me and how I'm a dumb Republican and all this stuff. This isn't about Republican or Democrat. I oppose the Iraq war. I opposed the upping of this situation in, in uh, other areas of the world like Afghanistan. I'm a constitutionalist. I want peace if we're not attacked first. I want truth and justice. And... When you look at Obama supporters, particularly, I've never seen a group of people that are more tribal, that are more groupthink, that are more cult-like uh, in their absolute fealty to Obama. And so, uh, okay, fine, give them another peace prize then. Because during the break, I was in another part of the office and uh, Fox News was on. 
And it was like a big victory for the rebels. They've taken the, the great Christian city of such and such, and it showed them blowing up the churches. And then I walked in and CNN was praising it, saying, big victory for the rebels. They've taken the Christian city of, and now Europe, the Christians are fleeing and are begging for uh, to be able to escape to Europe, but that probably won't be allowed. <laughs> and the host looked all satisfied, like we're gonna, tonight we'll feast on Christian flesh. It reminded me of like Sauron or something, or Saruman in the Lord of the Rings saying, Tonight you will feast on man flesh. I mean, it's just like, you really get an idea of how the authoritarian left really, anywhere they're Christians, they're happy to blow it sky high. I mean, they want to they want to get rid of Christians. These are freaks. These are, I mean, it was really hitting me what authoritarian trash these people are. And the next time I'm flying and some TSA is like, where are you going? What you doing? Are you planning something? I'm going to go, oh, this is your behavioral analysis training? You mean for the government that runs Al-Qaeda? In fact, I did that when I flew back from England. They were asking me all sorts of questions, and I went, you know the government ships in the drugs, and you know the government runs the terrorist. And the lady went, I know. You can go. And then and there was another guy I had to go to, and I gave him the same speech. Then I had to go back through TSA again to get on a plane from Dallas to Austin, and they were going, what you doing? Where are you going? I go, man, knock it off. The government runs all the terrorists. They're like, oh, sir, go on through. And I'm like, yeah, it's all fiction. And people are like, come on, buddy, don't cause a problem. I'm like, cause a problem? This country's going into tyranny. I'm not joking. Leanne McAdoo was with me. I'm going to get her on there to tell the story. I mean, I'm not putting up with this hoax anymore, folks. This whole thing of Americans could be terrorists and the founding fathers are bad and veterans are the number one threat. I thought all this was set up for, for Al-Qaeda. Oh, you run them. This is just a big power grab. And see, people get that now. And the establishment has miscalculated how dumb they thought the American people were. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.